gone for until late August, didn't you? Well, you're not quite that lucky. See, there always is a thing in late April where I have to weigh in with my comments. It's that annual dance that determines the future of our favorite NFL teams. And of course, as you've known for five years, of course, actually, all my life, it's been the Buffalo Bills. And this is the first NFL draft with Doug Marone as the Bills' coach. Well, let's not waste any more time. Let's get to Doug Marone's first draft as the coach of the Buffalo Bills. Now, everybody pretty much knew Buffalo was definitely looking for a franchise quarterback. Because let's face it, ever since Jim Kelly called it a career, there's been a lot of quarterbacks that Buffalo has gone through, especially Drew Bloodsoe, Rob Johnson, J.P. Lossman, or I should say Loosman, and others. And yet they haven't found that guy to be the franchise quarterback. And of course this past offseason, they got rid of the guy who had been there the last few years. And after it had been signed a contract extension, decided to turn in, hey, this is a party. And you know what? He was so inconsistent. There's no consistency even if he did have viscosity. So Fitzpatrick's gone, and in comes Kevin Corn on the cob. He signs a new contract to become the Bills' quarterback, and he boasts, I'm going to take him to the Super Bowl. But you know... We definitely needed a new guy to groom to be that next guy to take us to the promised land. So let's look at it. Now everybody's thinking because Marone's now the coach of the Bills that they, he would grab his old friend from Syracuse, the guy he groomed during his four years as the Orange's coach, Ryan Nassib, <clears throat> mainly because the Jets had made rumors that they were going to pick him with either the ninth or the 13th pick. Well, Buffalo made that trade with the St. Louis Rams. They traded down to the 16th pick, picked up a couple more picks, and yet no quarterback was taken. And I'm thinking, oh boy, Nassib's going to reunite. Nassib's going to reunite with Marone. And then it came. Roger Goodell said, with the 16th pick in the NFL draft, the Buffalo Bills select E.J. Manuel, quarterback, Florida State. And I'm like, huh? Of course, I knew there had been rumors. Buffalo had been looking at him. Well, apparently, the rumors became fact. The truth is, Manuel is still a little bit unpolished, but he's got a lot of great attributes at him. He's got good character, he's got a good arm, he's got fleet feet, and he can deliver the ball right through a little keyhole, right where it needs to go. Maybe Manuel will work out after all. Thing is, everybody knows what happened nine years ago when they drafted J.P. Loosman. But now you gotta think of something here. Look at all the initials that are on the Bills' team now. E.J. Manuel, T.J. Graham, C.J. Spiller, and of course, nine years ago, he had J.P. Loosman. Well, you think, what's with all these initials? It's letter perfect, but you know what would have completed it? Had the Bills drafted some guy named J.J., because you know, that would have been a dynamite! All right, let's stop the 70s glib, shall we? Let's hope Manuel is the guy to lead us to the promised land. And of course, who is a quarterback's best friend? Why is wide receiver core, of course? And of course, Buffalo hasn't had any consistent wide receiver to go along with their main man, Steve Johnson. They need a compliment to Johnson. And in the second round, I think they got him. 
They drafted one of the top wide receiver prospects, one of Matt Barkley's favorite targets at USC, Robert Woods. And of course, Barkley had been looked at by the Bills. Well, of course, Barkley fell all the way to the third round as, as everybody was suspective of his shoulder. But you know, Woods is a pretty darn good receiver. He's a pretty good possession receiver. Thing is, you need possession and you also need speed. The Bills are hoping TJ Graham can be at speed. But of course, he was a rookie and he hadn't worked out the kinks yet. But I'll get back to speed in a minute. With their other second round pick, the one that they acquired from the Rams, they decided to draft a guy with a rap sheet. And I don't mean this kind of rap sheet. Quick to the point, to the point, no faking. Cooking MCs like a pound of bacon, burning them. All right, let's stop with the MC and shall we? Let's take a look at him. Kiko Alonzo, a linebacker from Oregon, who complimented Dion Jordan, who was one of the top picks. Alonzo may have a rap sheet and maybe some character issues, but apparently the Bills like this kid's upside. Because, you know, the linebacker corps for the Bills has not been good. And I mean not with a big N. Heck, they even made a trade a couple days ago shipping Kelvin Shepard off to the Colts and picking up a Colts linebacker. But let's hope Alonzo can keep his troubles behind him and help the Bills linebacker corps. Of course, you know what to do with these Oregon guys. Everybody, duck! All right, let's bring your head back up, shall we? <laughs> and getting back to speed, let's talk about it with their third round pick. They decided to go with a kid from Texas who is a speed burner. In fact, he ran the fastest 40 at the NFL Combine, Marquise Goodwin out of Texas. The only thing wrong with him, they think, is suspect hands. Now, how can you have suspect hands? Only if you're like, you're under arrest. Of course, if you're in the Amish community, you'd have a cloth on your hands. You're under arrest, you have suspect hands. Of course, you know what a guy with his hand in a horse's ass is called, an Amish mechanic. But let's get back to that, the what we're talking about, shall we? Goodwin is a speed burner. He may be the answer for the Bills to stretch the field. Because let's just say, Donald Jones, who was supposedly the speed burner for the Bills the last two years, couldn't really find any speed if he were a Mack truck. And you know how those diesels are, slow to get up to speed. Of course, one of the all-time great running backs was known as the diesel, John Riggins. Even at his fastest speed, he was a plotter. But he was a hell of a running back, hell of a character. But let's help Marquise can get some games for us with his catch. Because if he cinches a game with us, you know, it's a good win. And let's take a look at the, quickly at the Bills' ladder round draft picks, shall we? Their fourth and fifth picks were both safeties. Because, you know, Buffalo did get rid of a couple of good safety picks. Cor cornerbacks the, over the offseason. Terrence McGee and George Wilson both were released in camp moves. Of course, Wilson was picked up by the Titans. I don't know where McGee is playing, but he should have a couple of good years left. But their fourth round pick also has a rap sheet. And no, I'm not going back to Vanilla Ice. I'm going to say something in honor of the member of Chris Cross who died yesterday. Godspeed, young man. I'm very sorry. But you know, I don't know if this draft pick will make Bill's fans go, jump, jump. Well, it's Duke Williams. He also has a rap sheet. But of course, Marone and the Bills like his upside. And of course, you know how those players from Nevada can be. They have a pistol offense. But of course, you have a pistol in honor of their ex-coach, you might want to say, ALT!
That's Halt without the H. <laughs> and let's hope Williams has the upside that can help the secondary. And their fifth round pick was Jonathan Meeks, a safety out of Clemson. Thing is, I didn't see this kid come on any draft boards. He must have been a late addition. Or Marone and the Bills must have seen something in him that he liked. Well, of course, Marone got away from Syracuse because Clemson is coming to play the Orange next year in the Dome. Maybe Marone wanted to take a look. Let's see how Clemson players can get. Maybe I can give Schaefer some information. Well, I don't know. Let's hope Meeks is a great addition to the Bills of secondary. And for their final two picks, let's take a look. They know that Ryan Lindell may be coming near the end of his career, even though I still think he's a good place kicker. So what do the Bills do with their sixth round pick? Go back to Florida State. Of course, Florida State in the last 15, 20 years has produced some pretty good kickers. Heck, look at Sebastian Janikowski. He made Al Davis's thing on a whim of making him a number one pick. Look like a genius there, because after a rough start, Janikowski is a pretty good place kicker. And of course, there was Xavier Bedia, who had the notion of swinging his arms when he went up to kick the ball. Well, of course, I kind of wonder, he auditioning to be a windmill? But this pick, I don't know. I don't think he swings his arms, but he's a Groza Award finalist, Dustin Hopkins. He was the number one rated place kicker for the NFL draft. If he is the heir apparent to Lindell, let's hope he's a good kid. And their seventh round pick, he was a gut kid who looked like he could be a second or third rounder if he hadn't had a knee problem. Chris Gregg of Arkansas. He, could, he was picked because there's still questions about Scott Chandler recovering from his ACL injury, and there could have been the depth there at tight end. Well, let's hope Gregg can help grab the spot there for the tight ends. And it... I'll just take a quick look here at one of their undrafted free agents, Derek Rogers. He came from Tennessee Tech to the Bills, and he was expected to maybe be drafted in the second or third round. But of course, he had drug problems when he played for the Volunteers. Thing is, he was dismissed for the Volunteers. He went to Tennessee Tech, and he was a man among boys. Buffalo may have found a gem with this Derek. But let's w wonder, why would her, his parents name him Derek? Derek, get it. I'm Der Haas. Well, you gotta know, what is going on with the names? Derek, Tennyson. What is with the names? Do they have to be phonetically perfect? Spell them correctly, shall we? And also, let me have one final word about two other names. Cordero, Barkevius. What is going on here? Hey, Barkevius, how do you think about being selected by the Cleveland Browns? Roof, 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 roof. What does that translate to? I don't know, but it sounds good. Let's hope these eight... New Buffalo Bills become the foundation for a team that Doug Marone can take them to some place that they haven't been in 13 years, the playoffs. The NFL draft is where you build teams. Free agency could be quick fixes, but it's the draft that make teams. Let's hope this is the start of a great era for Doug Marone in Buffalo with these eight and maybe Derek Rogers. I'm Ken Haas, and until late August, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it.